Welcome to Dose of Courage, a podcast for purpose-driven women in search of community who are ready to level up in their faith, business, and life. I'm Courage Molina, your Courage Coach, here to equip you with the tools you need to live a bolder and more courageous life so you can increase your impact and income. Courage Crusaders, let's go. What's up? I'm so excited to be here again today. Um, Welcome to all of you first time listeners. I'm so glad you're here. You can just go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Don't wait. All of the good things come through the YouTube channel. Go ahead. Uh, That's the best way to subscribe to the podcast or you can subscribe to however you're listening to it right now. For those of you who have been with me for a minute, what's up? I'm so glad y'all keep coming back. It is truly um, a blessing. Listen, I hesitate to say that because I'm like, what other words could I use to really help you guys understand what a big deal it is to me that you keep listening to the podcast? I prayed for it, right? Like this, that I would have a message that I could help people. And you know that you're helping people when one, people share it and two, people keep coming back. And so um, I definitely don't take y'all for granted. I'm glad y'all are here. How have y'all been post Thanksgiving? Um, I talked to a friend yesterday. She said she still has Thanksgiving dinner to throw away. Y'all, it's mid-December, and I definitely remember those days, but this year, um, because Thanksgiving was so small, you know, we didn't really host. We had one friend that we invited over. I only made enough food for Thanksgiving Day and the day after, okay? So I'm not sick of Thanksgiving food. I'm looking forward for the first time in a long time. For the first time in years, I am looking forward to a traditional Christmas dinner. Usually we have so much Thanksgiving food left over and we're eating so much of it for so many days. By the time Christmas comes, I'm like, bruh, I don't want that. (laughs) But it's not like that this year, so that's super dope. That's that's so so amazing. Um, For the past, what, uh, four episodes? four or five. For the past five episodes, we've been talking about the habits that you need to put in place in order to courageously level up in your faith, your business, and your life. And so if you've missed those, you definitely want to go back and listen to them um, so that you know what it is we believe here, you know what it is we do here, and you know what you can expect, um, not only in the podcast, but in the Dose of Courage community as well. Uh, Your girl is about to turn 40 this year. About to turn 40. December 23rd. I was born December 23rd, 1980, and I am about to be 40 years old. I'm so excited um, about it. But I remember a few years ago, I was either 35, getting ready to turn 36, or I was 36. I think I was 35, getting ready to turn 36. It was just a few days before my 36th birthday. So it was probably... Around this time, if I'm honest, it was probably around this time of year. um, I remember being at home, taking a nap. It had to be like a few days because I don't know why I would have been taking a nap in the middle of the day back then if I wasn't on vacation or something. So I was taking a nap, you know, and um, something, this pain woke me up out of my sleep from my nap. And listen, y'all may not know this about me, but let me just let y'all know. If sleeping were an Olympic sport, I would be a multi-gold medalist, okay? Because I can sleep through anything. I slept through a tornado. Tornado came down my street when I was probably in like high school. Slept right through it. Wasn't bothered by it in any way, shape, or form. I can sleep through a lot of things. So I feel like... And I think that's partly because, like, culturally, oh, your leg hurt? Go lay down somewhere. Oh, your stomach hurt? 
go lay down somewhere. <laughs> so that's my first response to not feeling well. I'm just going to go and lay down. And if I can't sleep through it, then I'm going to go to the hospital, go to the doctor. Um, and that has just been probably not a great rule of thumb, but that's kind of been my rule of thumb. So I was laying down, I was taking a nap and this pain, I, this pain in my body woke me up. Okay. It was this pain across my chest. Um, the pain went down my left arm a bit. It didn't radiate. It just extended. It reached down my arm. Um, I had difficulty breathing and I just kind of, I sat up slowly and um, on the side of the bed, my husband was in bed taking a nap. It must have been, it had to be vacation time or it was the weekend. Maybe it was the weekend. Yeah, maybe that's it. <laughs> but it was definitely very close to my birthday. So I sat on the side of the bed and I, you know, I'm trying to do this breathing, but the pain is so severe. I'm actually thinking to myself, oh, am I about to die? Like, am I about to have a heart attack right now? Am I having a heart attack? I'm like, this isn't like, it hurts a lot, but this, this isn't a heart attack. And so I didn't wake my husband up. I got up. I drove myself. My mom was here. I didn't tell anybody. I was like, oh, I'll be back. I could feel this pain. I couldn't turn my head. And so I drove myself very slowly to urgent care. Got to urgent care, sign in, and um, just, just sitting there waiting. You know, just sat there waiting. And, you know, you have to put your name and what you're there for. So the lady saw that I was there because I had chest pain. She's annoyed with me. She's like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? Why didn't you say something? I was like, I was just waiting my turn. I don't feel like I'm having a heart attack. I'm like, but well, my chest really does hurt. They take me back. They do all the tests. They put the EKG on me. Um, the nurse, again, is like, what are you thinking? What are you doing? You know, you should have gone to the emergency room. Yada, yada, yada. I'm like, listen, man, relax. So the doctor comes in uh, to examine me. The pain is starting to not necessarily go away, but it is, it's not running through my body. You know, before it felt like it was running through my body. Now it's just, you know, it's concentrated in my chest. And so I'm just sitting there and she's asking me questions. She's asking me, you know, what do I do for a living? And what's my stress level like? I'm like, well, my stress is regular. You know, my stress is, is, is just like anybody else's, I mean. It's basic. I'm not really stressed out. And um, then she asked me what I did. I'm like, oh, well, I'm a high school Spanish teacher. And I'm trying to build this business on the side. I have three kids. I'm married. My mom lives with me. We have a cat and dog. She looks up from her clipboard and she's like, so then the answer to the first question, you know, are you stressed? The answer to that question is yes. Right? I was like... I'm like, this is just regular. And this is I'm like, it's not stress. It's my life. That's what I said. To I'm like, it's not stress. It's my life. So I continue to run some tests. They get some stuff back. And then she comes back and she says, it's not a heart attack, which I knew. And um, she's like, it's stress. I'm like, it's not stress because I feel it. Right here. I'm like, it's not. A, I'm even though she's saying it's stress, I'm saying I'm hearing Oh, you're having a panic attack. I'm like, no, that's not what this is because I can still feel the pain in my chest and my neck is tight and my arm. I'm like, it's not, I said it's not stress, but I was also thinking, oh, it's, this is not a panic attack. But that's not what she said. She said it is stress. And so when I was like, no, that's not what it is. She asked me, she said, well, there are only two things that cause this because the problem was that my chest wall was inflamed so it was swollen right there was inflammation in my chest wall which made it difficult for me to breathe it was painful and it is what was reducing my range of motion from my neck and my arm um it I felt like you know those things i don't know what they're called but football players they put these maybe they're just shoulder pads right <laughs> they put these things on I could feel pain. It's like somebody put that on me and made it super tight. It just, it was 
very painful. And so um, she said there are only two things that cause that. She said stress or blunt force trauma. She said, so were you in an accident? Did somebody hit you? And I was like, somebody hit me. I was like, no, ain't nobody hit me. Man, I wouldn't be here. I would be seen by somebody else right now. She laughed. She was like, okay, well, then it's stress. Those are the only two things. And I'm like, man, this is crazy. So she's going to go. She's going to bring something for me or whatever. Um, and while she's gone, the nurse comes in. And she was like, do you understand what happened? Do you understand what has happened here? And I'm like, um... I don't, I'm like, you check me and I don't have a heart attack? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what's happened to you. I mean, I don't know what you're getting at. She's like, the stress that you carry in your body has now manifested itself physically. She was like, the next time it could be a heart attack, the next time it could be a stroke. She was like, so you need to get it together and take this seriously. She's like, you could have, she's like, you are young. You could have a heart attack once you cross over from where, from a place where the stress of your life starts to manifest itself in physical symptoms. You have way too much stress in your body. You need to understand that the next time that you spill over, it could be a stroke. It could be a heart attack. And I thought, wow. You know, and that was that was the sad part and the crazy part about it is that was not the first time I heard that. That wasn't the first time that my stress had manifested itself in a physical way. Just um, a few years prior to that, I've been diagnosed with IBS. And when, you know, and I had all these tests run and all these episodes, I was sick. I missed a lot of work. Finally got to a specialist, a gastrointestinal specialist, and they did all this testing and he diagnosed me with IBS. And he's like, do you know what causes IBS? Stress, anxiety, depression. And so he asked me those three years prior, um, what are your, what do you do to relax? And I'm like, well, I sleep. He's like, no, that's not relaxing. He's like, that's resting, which is good. But every single day, even if you're not um, in a state of chaos, you your body's experiencing stress, even if you're not in a state of chaos. And that was important. That was a very important distinction for me because that's how I live, right? Very extreme. I'm waiting for something to happen for me to respond. At least that's how I lived back then. I'm waiting... Oh, this has happened. This means I need to rest. I can kind of feel that I probably need to take a day off, but I'm literally waiting until my body breaks down to be like, oh, well, I'm actually physically sick. So now I'm going to take a rest. He's saying to me, you can't wait until then. Like, you can't do that. You need to have this at the top of your mind. And he gave me a list of relaxation activities that I could do. Now, the thing with the IBS is, is that it doesn't actually um, like so your digestion your digest I speak I can I know my words y'all hold on <laughs> um, your digestive system isn't broken it doesn't have holes it doesn't have you know any of that it basically is misbehaving it's not broken so there isn't anything to fix it basically doesn't function properly. Um, because of the stress that you carry in your body, which, by the way, you mostly we mostly carry in our gut. So I'm like, okay. So he wants to give me this medicine to help me relax. He wants, I don't know what it is. I can't remember. It was it was a while ago, but it's something I would be taking every day. And I said, well, how long will I have to take this? He was like, there's no cure for IBS. You know, once you have it, you have it, and that's pretty much it. And so for the first few weeks after that, I had so many episodes. I was sick all the time. And then I remembered that if my mind and my thoughts could cause it, then I would have faith that my mind and my thoughts would cure it. But as you can tell, I didn't do a great job because, like I said, that was three years before I ended up in the emergency room. Um, or not in the emergency room, in urgent care for this 
for, you know, uh, my chest pain, right? So I'm like, okay. And that's when I realized that I couldn't just, you know, allow myself to go and run and run and run and do all these things and, and work and work and work and serve and serve and serve without having myself in that rotation. I needed to be taking care of myself. I needed some self-care activities. I need some relaxation activities. And it needed to be something that I built up into a habit because without it, because of what I do and how I'm set up, I just work like I want to work. I want to do good work. I want to do good things. I am not a slow paced person. Everything is go, go, go. I might take my time to do something, but I want to take my time to do it sooner rather than later, right? That is the nature of how I am. And I think that might be the nature of, um, you know, purpose chasers also, right? I think it might be the nature of those of us who want to level up. I think it might be the nature of those of us who are trying, not trying, those of us who are building a legacy of impact that we understand the importance of work, but sometimes we can focus more on that. And so in today's episode, I really want to talk to you um, about habit number five, which is practicing self-care religiously, right? Practicing self-care religiously, not sporadically, but religiously. As a full-time entrepreneur um, with financial obligations, with relational obligations, right? I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I can't just um, be like, oh, I'm not doing those things. Right there, I have obligations. And my focus, probably like most of you, um, is on work and taking care of the things that need to be done. I can't even say that I necessarily, before I learned this habit, um, I don't think that I necessarily even was spending so much time necessarily quality time with my family and so in this session I really want to talk to you about how self-care is the first step in caring for other people and what it really looks like so when we talk about self-care the first thing that comes to my mind are like manicures pedicures massages a spa which I love but when people talk a lot about like okay I have a me day or this is me time it's usually the time where we are, like I'm getting my hair done, getting my eyebrows, getting all the things waxed, getting my manicure, my pedicure, and those are the things that we are usually talking about. But those aren't things that we do every day or day to day. I'm not getting my hair done. I'm not Beyonce. I can get my hair done every day, right? That's not a thing. <laughs> um, I'm not getting groomed every day. So that, that's not a thing. But self-care is so much more than that. Self-care is really you taking care of your mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual health, right? So when you think about yourself, think about your thoughts, about your emotions, about your physical body, right? Um, and about your spiritual health. When we when I'm talking about self-care, I'm talking about that. Not just the physical stuff, not just drinking water. Let me drink some water as I say that. Right? Not just not just those things. Um I'm talking about everything from your needs to your wants, boundaries that you need to set, um, protecting yourself, protecting yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Um, removing things from your environment and from your life that might cause you harm physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Support um, to help you as you develop healthy habits uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I, I know I'm like, I keep saying that, but I want you to get that this is a holistic approach to you, like to yourself. I want you to think of yourself in all those parts, not just your physical, not just your mental, but your emotional health too, and, and your spiritual health too. Those all have an impact on um, on you and your ability to answer the call on your life, you know? And so why is this important? I know that you've heard it before, but are, like, do you really understand 
what a big deal it is. First and foremost, you matter to God. I don't know how we got to this place as women where the badge of honor that we are looking for is being the most run down person in the room in the sense of I'm the most exhausted person. I'm, I'm excited that I am the most exhausted person. I have helped more people than you. And even though I don't feel well and I feel sick and I'm tired or I'm struggling or I look a bit disheveled, I'm going to wear this as a badge of honor because it means I'm a better woman than you. It means I'm a better wife than you. I'm a better mom than you. I read um, and I see all the time on social media, real women put their kids first no matter what. Real women, I do whatever I have to do to like all of this, these ideas where as a woman, I am measured by how tired and exhausted I am. And the more tired and exhausted I am, the better I am at what I do. That's the assumption, right? The more serious I am because I'm staying up late, because I'm allowing myself to be run raggedy by my kids, by my spouse. I don't know where that comes from. I certainly used to subscribe to that school of thought. Um, I don't anymore, but I definitely did. I don't know where that comes from. It's like we're not important, like you don't matter. That's not true. That's That had to have come from the enemy in some shape or form because you matter to God. You. I ain't talking about your kids or your husband or your job or your church where you serve, or your volunteer, like, I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about you. You listening to this podcast right now, you matter to God. You are a top priority to him. And, you know, it's, it's important that you are making sure that you get what you need daily, And without apology, you know, when you think about things that have a ton of value, um, let's say I'm trying to think of, okay, so um, my cousin brought his car here to the house and uh, he parked it because he was taking a flight somewhere. He was going to be gone somewhere for a few days. Now, listen, it's not my car. It's not, I didn't create it. I didn't even purchase it, but he left it in my care. Do you think that I ran it raggedy? Do you think that I drove it all over the place? Didn't put gas in it until it was on fumes? Do you think that I didn't park it in a safe place? That I rented it? No, it might might not have been mine, but it was left in my care. And so because I know that it's valuable to him, I take care of it. How much more so should we be taking care of ourselves understanding that we are valuable to God. Even your body is not your own, right? Like even your body is not your own. Everything that you have, your mind, your body, your thoughts, your emotions, those things are on loan to you, right? You didn't pay the price for them. Those things are on loan to you. We are to be good stewards of the things that we've been blessed with. And you've been blessed with life. You've been blessed with the body. You've been blessed with the mind. You've been blessed with emotions. You've been blessed with, you know, an an ability to have a relationship with God. Those things are a blessing. You've been blessed with those things. They are very valuable. You are very valuable. It makes sense that taking care of yourself would be a top priority to God. It's not a badge of honor for me to ask you to take care of something and for you to use it so much in service of other people that it is now run down and it cannot do the thing that I created it to do at the level it was created to do it. Let me say that again. It makes no sense that we would not take care of ourselves. You need to take care of yourself understanding that you are a child of the Most High God and you are a top priority for Him. 
you were created with a purpose. And what we do when we don't take care of ourselves is we allow ourselves to be used to the point of exhaustion. We are misused. We are raggedy. We don't get the upgrades that are available to us. We don't get the maintenance that is necessary to make sure that we are operating at our optimal levels. And so now we become too tired and too run down to do the work we were purposed to do at the level we were purposed to do it. So some of you are like, no, that's why I'm so tired because I'm building. No, that's why I'm so whatever, because I'm taking care of because I'm serving people, because I'm taking care of something. If your body shuts down, who's going to do the work? And I shouldn't say if, I really should say when. When your body shuts down, when you're getting sick because a lack of rest reduces your immune system, right? It gives you a compromised immune system. And so you might be a healthy person, but you don't have healthy habits. You are not taking care of yourself. You could be a high, listen, you might have a high-end Tesla, but if you are not giving te the Tesla what it needs, it is not going to run properly. It's not going to run at the level for which it was created. Some things are going to be broken beyond repair. Makes makes no sense. So the first thing you need to know is that you are important to God. I said it, you know, a second ago, but let's just kind of go back to it. You have a calling. You have purpose. You have a job to do. You have people to serve. There's somebody waiting for you to show up and do what you have been created to do. I can't show up if I'm in the bathroom because my IBS is acting up. Hello. I can't give you the energy that you need on stage or on the digital platform if I'm not well rested. Right? If I'm tired and exhausted. I just can't do it. You know, you have a calling, a purpose, you know, for people to serve. And, and, and so you can't do that if you're not taking care of yourself. You can't do the third thing. You can't do anything well when you aren't well, period. You cannot do anything well when you yourself are not well. So here's the assignment, right? As we talk about practicing self-care religiously, what does that look like? That means that I need to have a routine. Come on, y'all knew where this was going. I need to have a routine where I'm incorporating self-care activities on a daily basis. I use the word religiously intentionally because when you think about things that people do religiously and like people are like, oh, I don't want to be religious. I don't want to be religious maybe when it comes to my spiritual growth, but I want to be religious when it comes to this routine. Why? Because it means I do it whether I feel it or not. It means I do it whether I understand the importance of it or not. It means that come hell or high water, I'm going to show up for myself and do this thing. I'm going to check it off my list. It is not reduced. Its benefits are not reduced because you don't have the right mindset when you do it. I don't have to have the right mindset as I sip my water. My body doesn't care. <laughs> okay? My body is getting exactly what it needs every time I sip the water. I don't have to think, "Oh my gosh, I love this." No, that's why I'm that's why I am intentionally saying you can do this religiously. You don't have to love it. Hopefully, you will grow to love it once you see the benefits of it. Um I'm not struggling with you know, my chest anymore. My IBS episodes are few and far in between. And I can, I always, when I, whenever I experience one, I'm like, oh, I always know it's because I haven't been doing my routine. I have lost my mind. What? Crazy. Let me get back to it. Because the life that I live is one that causes me stress. And it's not that I'm stressed out. It's whatever you are doing, especially if you're doing important work. If you're doing purpose work. If you are getting to the next level, doing that type of work, that causes stress on your body, even if you're not mentally stressed out. Those kids that you love, they and they're so cute, and you love taking care of them, they cause you stress. That husband you couldn't wait to marry, and he still looked like a snack 25 years later, chill, causes you stress. It's just, it's what it does. It's, it's how it is. And so... 
What's your assignment? This week, like every single week, I'm inviting you to, you know, try out the Boulder morning. Every week, I'm inviting you to try out the this. This your assignment this week. Your assignment for this week is to commit to Boulder mornings for the next 30 days. That is your assignment. That's not your challenge. I'm not saying if you think you want to do it. I'm saying I want you to commit to Boulder mornings for the next 30 days. Why? Because there are so many things in there that are great for your self-care. The blessing the Lord. Gratitude is great for your mindset. So that's great for your mental. It's great for your spiritual. Having a conversation with God. Optimizing your visualization. It's great for your mental. And it's great for your emotional. Thinking about where God is taking you to. L is great for your mental. It's great for your emotional. Why? Because the more I learn, the better I can do things that I've been called to do, the less stress I have in getting those things done, the more effective I become. So L, learning something relevant helps your mental and your emotional. D, declaring and decreeing helps your mental and your emotional. And if some of those affirmations are based in the word of God, also helps your spiritual. E, exercise, helps your mental, helps your physical, helps your emotional, and your spiritual health, right? And then R, reading the Bible, helps your mental, emotional, and spiritual health. All of these things. I'm not saying that this is enough. There are other things that you'll need to do, right? But this is a great place to start and get consistent. This is a great place to start. And if you stick with it for 30 days, you will see a difference. You'll see a difference in how you show up. You'll see a difference in mental clarity. You'll see a difference in how you respond to difficult situations. To how quickly you are able to take control of your emotions. Not that you can't feel them and process them but that they're not in the driver's seat of your decisions and how you spend your day or what's going to be, you know, what you're going to think about all day based on how you felt about it. No, that will be done. Okay. 30 days. The second thing I want you to do is join dose of courage community. I want you to join the dose of courage community. And the third assignment, the third part of the assignment is to share this podcast. Okay. Share this podcast. These habits are helping women all across the globe, and you want to be a part of sharing that. So if this has blessed you in any way, giving you an aha, share it, share it, share it. Tag me on social media at Courage Molina. As always, I appreciate you guys coming, listening, coming to each session. I love that you guys continue to come back to these coaching sessions, and I love to see you go out and take action. It is my hope when I do these podcasts that it will help you to show up as your most bold self so that you can take courageous action consistently as you are leveling up in your faith, in your business, in your life. All right. As always, have an amazing week. I'm your girl, Courage Molina. You know your Courage Coach and your favorite Bible teacher, your assignment. Oh, I didn't even tell you where you could go. Hold on. Go to CourageMolina.org. Go to the website. There is a free resource library on the website, CourageMolina.org. When you go in there, you'll be able to find the training uh, for Boulder Morning. There's a free training and a workbook, so it'll set you up for success. All right, until next time, love you.